Hi Stampers, it's Robin. Welcome to The Roost. Today I'm going to share with you a cool cascading accordion fold card that fellow demonstrator Judy Strickland shared with me. Um, I did make these for my grandsons for Easter. Um, it was a great project for an Easter card. I'm going to make a fun flower card um, for this one. Now for the base of the card you're going to start out with a 12 by 8 piece of paper so you can just go ahead and your cut that on your trimmer cut off that piece and of course you're going to save that for something else and then we're going to slide our cutting blade out of the way and we're just going to go along here and score every two inches so two four six eight and ten. Now for our next step we're actually going to cut um, at a diagonal across here and we're going to do it two and a half inches from each edge. So I'm just going to take a little marker here and or I'm sorry a pen and I'm just gonna make a little mark so we're gonna do two and a half inches and then up on this side we're going to do it you know on, on the opposite corner we're gonna do two and a half inches on this side so I'm just gonna make a little tick mark on each one of those and then we can angle this and it just barely fits across our trimmer so we're just gonna line our little dots up on our cutting line. I'm going to go ahead and cut that. <clears throat> now comes the tricky part. Most of that was pretty straightforward and simple. Now we need to make our slots so that these two panels can go together. So we're going to take, and just to make it a little bit easier to see these, I'm going to go ahead and do the, whoops, the accordion fold here <clears throat> on my score lines. And we wouldn't have to do that right now, but it just makes it a little bit easier to see. Whoop de doop de doo, back and forth. Okay. So now we're going to want these to slide together. <coughs> so we're going to think of it as one sheet. Now we want to cut um, on this tall one. We're going to start on this, you know, on the tall side on this one with the flat edge against our edge here. And we want our trimmer. Okay, so for the first one, we're going to line. I'm hoping you can see this. Okay, we're going to line our score, first score mark up here on the longest edge, and that's going to be two and a half inches. And I love this trimmer for cutting this because we can just go up to the two and a half inch. So then we're going to go, we're going to skip one and then go to the next fold and this one is going to go to two inches. So we'll just slice that down to two and then we're going to skip one and go to the next one. So this is our littlest one and this one is going to be one and a half inches. Okay. Now this is where it gets a little tricky. For this one, we actually have to cut from the angled side towards the flat side. So I'm going to start here on the short end, just because that's the way it was laying opposite. So I want to go from here down an inch and a half. So we're going to go a half inch and one inch if that makes sense to you. Somehow it does to me. Okay, so then we're going to skip one, go to the next one, keep that flat against there, and this one is going to go two inches. So we're going to start at a half, and we're going to go one, two, I think I'm about due for a new blade. Then we're going to go here, and this one is going to be two and a half, so half, one, and two. I don't know if anyone else counts backwards the same way I do when they're cutting, but 
So we have we have these. Um, so then just um, before you start putting them together, make sure they're opened up. And then you're just going to want to weave these slices in, you know, opposite each other. And as you can see, my blade did not do a great job. I think I have a new one in my drawer. I'm going to have to pull that out. Okay. So then you're going to want to get them all lined up. And if you find that one isn't quite, this one looks like maybe it's not cut quite all the way. Oh, yeah, it is. Okay, so you want it to line up flat on the bottom. Okay, we're done with our trimmer, so I'm just going to fold that up. We're going to take our fringe scissors, and I love these things. They're so much fun to play with. And we're just going to go and cut down however long you want your grass to be, uh, three quarters and an inch in. But, you know, it just depends on how you want it to look. So just go ahead and fringe the whole edge, or don't fringe the edge, however you want to do it, but for this particular card I'm going to make grass and then put flowers in it. For the Easter card I used the um, Happy Easter Bunny and the eggs from the Happy Easter Bunny and decorated it, you know, all kind of Eastery with eggs and flowers and the bunny. I hand cut him out and had him hopping through the middle. This one is just going to be, I'm thinking, a springtime birthday card. Would maybe make a nice Mother's Day card, too. Okay, so now we've got to do the accordion thing. There, and here's, here's our card base. It's a standard card size, so it'll fit in an envelope. And then... To decorate it, I am just going to use a bunch of my flower punches, and I will whip a few of those up and show you in just a minute. Okay, now I've cut a couple of um, leaf stems out from the Secret Garden set, uh, the Framelit set. It's actually a retired set, and then I am going to give it a little bit of ink. Now, the, they're cut out of pear pizzazz. And I'm using the um, Build a Bouquet set here. This is the big background stamp from that. And I'm just going to be lazy and not mount it. And I'm going to put some lines on my leaves. I guess I should have gone that direction with that one too. Uh, let's see, we can probably get enough ink out of here. Okay. So there's some, some lines to give them a little bit of veins. And then um, we can also just kind of lay it in the ink pad a little bit to get the edges darker because, you know, leaves are never like all solid. One color it gives it a more natural look if it's a little bit variegated. You could also take a sponge um, or a sponge dauber to do that. Now I'm also going to make some little um, daffodil flowers. So I'm just going to take the, a piece of daffodil delight and my little petite petals. And I'll maybe do a couple of these. And of course when I, when I work I have all of my stamps out here because I can never quite decide what are my punches because I can never quite decide what I'm going to use. You know, you get it out and then first one thing and then the other. So I'm just going to round the ends a little bit on these to give it a more um, natural look. You could also sponge these too or take your, um, you know, like maybe a little bit darker color and do the edges. Um, then I'm going to take a punch and this is actually a 5 8 inch punch that I have here. I was thinking a half inch, but I couldn't find one, so. Then I'm going to take the end of my, my little poker tool and just use that to wrap, to wrap this around. 
You know, you could use your um, your foam mat and the tip of a um, bone folder as well. So you can see it's not exactly a science. Definitely an art to this one. And you don't have to make flowers this way either. You know, if you, you want to just punch them and layer them out on there, that would be great too. I just wanted daffodils because right now it's springtime and I don't have any daffodils in my garden yet, but I'm sure i um, looking forward to them. The green part is up, you know, a few, uh, a few leaves. So I'm going to leave those sit. Now I've also punched out a few um, from an old, I think it was called Boho Blossom set. And I'm thinking these would look great with um, either a little dot of brown in the middle or maybe um, a candy dot. So I'm going to have to find my candy dots for those. Now I also, I want to take the um, Oh Happy Day greeting from the um, build a bouquet because I think that this is really going to be an oh happy day kind of a card. So I really want, let's see, I think Daffodil Delight because oh happy day and Daffodil Delight are kind of like a pair. Let's see and let's go with the Angelo Twist I think which is one of the in colors. going to see how this is going to work. So we've got our Oh Happy Day and let's close this before I land in it. Here is our extra wide oval punch which fits just perfectly for the Oh Happy Day. Okay. And then I think I'm going to want a tangelo twist piece behind this. So I'm just going to punch this again. And then maybe just I'm going to offset it like that. So that's going to go on one side of the card. And then I'm not sure what I want yet over here. And then I'm just going to layer my flowers that I've done. Kind of in the now if I could find my tape runner. I know I have about 10 of them here somewhere. Okay. Okay, and that one's empty. Here we go. I apologize for the barking dog. I don't know if any of you have a beagle, but beagles bark pretty much at everything. I live on a farm, so we have farm cats, and beagle thinks he has to bark at farm cats like he's never seen them before. Okay, so just do that. Okay, and then I think these orange, these orange flowers could use just a little bit of a neutral color. Now I think it would really look great too if you took a little extra time and added a little bit of sponging on all of these flowers. It would give them a little bit more depth. But you can see this is a really fun card. And then you can also put a nice white square on the back to give you somewhere to sign it or, or write your little greeting. So this would be a great card for someone who needs a little cheering up or for a birthday card. It's just a really fun and fairly simple over-the-top card. So hope you've enjoyed this. If you want to do some shopping, just hop on over to my store. And I've really enjoyed sharing this card with you today. Hope you enjoyed. 
come again. Thanks for stopping by.